Hey everyone, uh, today we are back at the roots of this channel and I am on a walk and I'm gonna just talk. So welcome to the PhD walkie talkie. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of, so just a bit of context about like what we are doing here and why I'm making these videos. So, you know, like on this channel, I really wanted to kind of like capture, wow, nice. So I just really wanted to capture and like document the whole PhD journey, you know, because first of all, I think Based on feedback, I think it could be encouraging for people who are kind of experiencing similar issues as I am to see that, oh yeah, you know, it's not irregular. It's kind of part of the job. And I think that could be very useful. Uh, the other thing is for me to look back on all of this because, you know, like four years from now, hopefully with uh, my PhD defended, I think it's just gonna be very great to look back on, you know, like, how I felt during the whole process and you know like get, get a bit of that uh, done. I had to come up with a format which I can do with pretty low effort you know without like a lot of elaborate editing and recording because that it's all, you know it's not sustainable so I had to come up with something else and I figured okay going on a walk and rambling I can do that. So aye, aye, aye. Ooh, the path is a bit muddy but uh, well managed. So the four questions that we are going to regularly check in on is what am I working on? How do I feel? One win and one thing I'm stuck on. And I think that should like be giving a reasonably good impression of uh, of what I'm what I'm up to nowadays. So, uh, what I'm working on? I just got access to the full data set that I can use for for my analysis, which is something that we've been working on for quite a while with the company, you know, to make sure that I have access and you know it's feasible I can work with it. So that's amazing. I'm really really happy about that. But at the same time, you know, it comes with a bit of uh, a few issues because it's huge uh, so now comes the point where I have to figure out a way to like m meaningfully subsample the user base uh, because I can't run analysis on a million users with the network modeling I want to do so that's gonna be the next big challenge I guess uh, figuring out like how to meaningfully subsample that data set how do I feel I feel a bit tired because it's a Thursday afternoon and I spend the whole day working, writing SQL code. Uh, but I feel pretty optimistic now about the project, you know, like I had a few ups and downs, you know, it's research, so you will have the ups and downs. But by now I feel currently quite optimistic because it looks like I have all the pieces of the data ready that I need. Yeah, so a bit tired, but quite optimistic. Uh, I also had a really nice conversation with a colleague of mine and she's going through a bit of a rough patch. And it was just nice, you know, to be able to like talk it out in the lab. Like these, these lab therapy sessions go a really long way. So, you know, like make sure that you talk to your colleagues about, <laughs> like fellow PhDs about like when you're going through it because it helps a lot. Okay, one thing I'm stuck on. I think I am mostly stuck on how to subsample, like how to make, draw a meaningful sample from my huge user base currently. I have a lot of data, which is, you know, it's a luxury problem to have, but there comes a point where a lot of data is not good because it's just more management and more issues with it. But currently, like, that's my biggest problem because I have data on millions of users, uh, which is great. My modeling framework can handle a few thousand, maybe like 10K if I push it, but more like 5,000 users. So I need to draw a sample out of uh, out of this user sample. Um, and I'm not sure how to do that. Like I have a few ideas, you know, like we wanted to do some stratified sampling strategy based on some like dem demographic data or whatever, but we don't really have the demographic data. So now our best guess is, you know, kind of like a pseudo bootstrapping uh, methodology. We're just like draw multiple samples of 5,000 from the million, uh, more or less and then run the whole analysis multiple times on the different samples and then kind of see how the how the 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 results hold up you know because like if we can do like i don't know a few samples of 5000 of a million and then it you know it kind of holds up that's a, that's a pretty good uh, indication that like there is something there uh, but like how exactly to do that is kind of that's the one thing i'm stuck on uh, this week one thing a win a win of the week i would say the win of the week is finding a theory, uh, yeah, getting the data, <laughs> hands down. But the other thing that I've been struggling a lot with is, you know, I do empirical research. So that means that you just collect data, you run an analysis, and then that analysis should underpin or test or inform some theoretical framework, yeah? Uh, 
But you know, because my research is quite exploratory, uh, currently not a lot of stuff being done in this uh, way, uh, it's a bit hard to find theory to fit the, the analysis that I can do or the data that I can use. So that was an ongoing uh, issue. So I had my analysis in mind more or less you know like i knew that like okay with this i can get really really solid interesting insights out of the data uh, about like you know user behavior and stuff like that which is kind of you know my phd project so that's great i was kind of lacking uh, a theoretical framing precisely to like kind of tie it to strategic management which is kind of the other side of the coin and that was really hard you know because like strategic management doesn't really work with user behavior uh, it's more like a marketing thing but like also, I'm not a marketing scholar. My supervisor is also not a marketing scholar. So it was like a bit of a difficult situation to find a good theoretical framing. It appears that we found one. Uh, it's just a direction yet. So I will have to, you know, like do some, like read some actual papers, do some mini literature review to confirm whether it works or not. Uh, I will tell you all about it later. Uh, I think a brief highlight, we are looking at the co-opetition literature, which is, you know, like when two firms are cooperating with each other in some fashion but they are also in competition with each other for some I don't know because like you know they are two big car manufacturers or something like that and they do like a joint project for electric vehicles but on other faucets of the companies they are competing stuff like that so the competition literature sounds very promising so that's where we are for the week uh, that was how what am I working on how am I feeling one thing I'm stuck on and one win from the week I think that's a pretty good snapshot like a bit of update of my week I hope you liked it I hope, you know, maybe it gives you a bit of confidence about your own uh, <laughs> PhD project. Um, and I hope you like the return of the glorious walk and talk. And uh, yes, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.